Hey guys, Timmy here from Link Building HQ. Welcome back to our video series, SEO for Beginners. In today's video, we'll be talking about keyword research. Many people attribute their SEO success to keyword research, but what is keyword research and why is it so important? Let's start off with that. All right, so here's how you can look at it. When we break off keyword research into two, we get keyword and research. Keywords are whatever terms searchers use to find what they're looking for. For example, they may type in best fitness bands to land on pages talking about them. There can be different types of keywords people use and there are different ways to treat them. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. For now, just think of keywords as search terms people use. And research is basically finding a host of such terms on different topics within a niche. And it doesn't end there. Your research should also indicate the selected keywords in terms of their relevancy and the ranking opportunity they present. Now, to tell you the importance of keyword research, let me paint you a picture. You have written a blog based on your gut feeling about the keywords people use. It's been weeks, but there has hardly been any traffic. Did you target the right keywords with enough search volume? Was the competition for the keyword too high? With keyword research, you're taking the guesswork out of the equation and focusing primarily on how your audience interacts with the search engine backed by numbers. This will help you in every step of the SEO process, whether it's your content, link building, email marketing, etc. This quote from Backlinko's Brian Dean pretty much sums up the importance of keywords. Without keywords, there is no such thing as SEO. All right, so now let's move on to the next part, which is the types of keywords. Keywords are generally categorized into two types, long tail and short tail. There are more ways to look at keywords, like checking their intent, seeing if they're location specific, whether they are branded or unbranded, etc. The important thing is to see what purpose they are fulfilling for you. Right now, we'll focus on how narrow or broad keywords can be. If your customers search for something like best waterproof fitness trackers under $50, that is an example of long tail keywords, simply because how narrow its search parameter is. However, had this query been related to just fitness trackers, that would be a short tail since it's broad in its intent. This also means that the volume and competition for long tail keywords is much less compared to short tail keywords. However, I have to point out that the importance of long tail keywords has increased since voice searches spiked in recent years. Now let's talk about how to get keyword ideas. Here are some great ways to get you going. Start by brainstorming topics or seed keywords. What I mean by this is understanding what sort of business you're in and then putting yourself in the customer's shoes to see what is the first thing they'd search if they were looking for something related to your content. For example, let's say you're a store called Timmy's Fitness that's selling fitness and exercise equipment. Your seed keywords can be fitness equipment, home exercise equipment, fitness equipment stores near me. For starters, you can type these in Google and see which websites are ranking for them. Also, free tools like Google Keywords Planner and Google Trends can go a long way to help you refine your initial list. You can also make use of paid tools, which will do all the heavy lifting for you. Our top recommendations are Ahrefs and SEMrush. If you want in-depth insights for your keywords, Ahrefs is super handy. It gives you loads of data, ranging from search volume, keyword difficulty, and backlinks you'll need for first page ranking, and so on. SEMrush also gives you a host of features related to keyword research, website audit, and more. However, we've been leaning more towards Ahrefs in recent years, as its interface is cleaner than SEMrush's. Its menus are laid out in a more logical fashion, and its dashboard feels more coherent. We're going to review these tools in detail in a separate video, show you how to use them, our favorite features. We'll cover the good, the bad, and the ugly in equal measures. All right, apart from keyword research tools, what else can you use? Well, there's Google People Also Ask and searches related to features. These features tell you what the related searches to your original keywords are. Similarly, 
Google's autocomplete feature also shows you other suggested keywords before you hit the search button. Take note of those as well, since Google is literally telling you there are people out there searching with those terms. You can also make use of popular platforms like Reddit and Quora. These public forums can be a gold mine for keywords. After all, your target audience is regular people who may use such platforms on a daily basis. So it's not a bad idea to use them for keyword ideas as well. Once you have all the keywords you want to target, you need to further filter them out based on different criteria to get to the best ones for you. Here are four factors you need to consider. The first one is relevance. This is a no-brainer. Remember Timmy's Fitness, the exercise equipment store? The relevant keywords for them would be around fitness, exercise, and equipment, not say computers and laptops. But that's just the start. The relevance of your keywords also need to align with your end goals. What is it you want to accomplish from targeting the keywords? Are you looking to increase leads, engagement, or traffic? Answering these questions will give you a better perspective on the value of keywords. Keyword difficulty gives you an idea about how hard it is to rank for a certain keyword. As a general rule of thumb, anything with a KD of less than 20 in Ahrefs should be relatively easy to rank for, but it gets more difficult as you move on. However, you shouldn't get discouraged by seeing a high keyword difficulty score for your target keyword. If you can keep it in your sights for the long term and keep working towards it by increasing your authority and creating great content, you can rank for it. In time, obviously. This kind of goes without saying. The search volume for the keywords needs to be substantial enough for you to make an effort to create content around them. Apart from search volume, keep an eye on the click volume, which is the amount of clicks the keywords generate. Now, probably the most important criteria is the searcher's intent. This is to know what the real purpose behind the searcher's query is. Is it to gather information, like searching for what's the best at-home exercise equipment? Is it to get a specific website, for example, typing in timmysfitness.com? Or is it related to buying something, like typing in buy treadmill or fitness store near me? Got your keywords list ready? Good. Now it's time to use them. Apart from the main content of your blog, here are some areas around your website where you can use your keywords. Meta tags. Meta tags, like meta titles and descriptions, describe the context of the page. They appear on SERPs and give users an idea of what to expect when they land on your page. Heading tags. Use keywords in your heading tags, like H2 or H3, as it gives Google crawlers an idea of how your content is organized. It can also help you score a featured snippet, which we've talked about in this video. Images. Since images are indexed too, it's a good idea to use keywords in them using the alt text HTML code. This gives more context to Google what your page is about. Anchor text. Anchor texts are words that contain a hyperlink to another page. You see the words in blue here? That's the one. Anchor texts that contain your keywords and sound natural are good. But you should use keyword-rich anchor texts sparingly, since you don't want to engage in keyword stuffing. So guys, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks a lot for sticking around to the end. In the next video, we'll be talking about on-page optimization. See you there.